What's up and welcome back to a recap of Propel's Talk. Recapping the enormous win in Phoenix before we get into it. Joined by Ralph Pivano. This is presented to you by Buku Media and Company Burger. Company Burger located at 4600 Ferret Street. Ross, we're going to get right into it. I mean, we just got on like shocked. I mean, listen, talking to a good basketball team, but the stuff that they did tonight was almost legendary. You know, like Devin Booker was unconscious. And guess what? The Pelicans still fought back. We're only down five at half. Um, going against Chris Paul, you know, you had rookies step up. Trey Murphy was incredible. Jose Alvarado was incredible. Another guy that was really good, Jackson Hayes, and then Brandon Ingram. Um, Ross, I'll, we're going to touch on this, and I'll throw it to you now, but Brandon Ingram's a superstar. He's literally a superstar. Oh, yeah. He is taking that – he's he's just taking his game and just – He's took it just to the next level. I mean, he was in a groove tonight where I was surprised when he missed. I was just like, you know, like he was incredible tonight, Ross. Yeah, I mean, to, look, it, we, and we'll talk about the other guys. Tonight was about Brandon Ingram. I, I think you've seen the buildup. You've seen the progression of, of where you're at now. I mean, he's one of the top handful of guys in the league right now. He's an offensive – I mean, when he's going now, he's going tonight – He. He's not even seeing a defender. No. I mean, just shooting over the top of everybody. And then we had heard earlier in the year that he had been really working on that three-point shot a lot and that, that it was coming. And so to see him go three or four um, tonight was, you know, I mean, look, if he, if he adds that element, I mean, he, he's really an offensive – I mean, he's, a, he's an animal on offense. But today, look, today tonight was about the stars. Um, you know, Brandon 30, 37, 11, nine, CJ 23, eight, nine. Those two guys went nine to 14 from three. They do that. We win. I don't care whether Devin Booker's there or not. And we can talk about some of the other guys. We shot, we shot the shit out of it tonight. 55% from three. Um, I think Jose and Trey combined for like five or six or five, seven. I mean, we shot the, we shot the piss out of it tonight, which yeah. is, which is great, but it was about the superstars tonight. They showed up. And we won. And and that's I think those guys are at that level. Like they show up and play yeah. well, we win. They're that, that good. Well, that's why that's the problem I was having, Ross. And I took a lot of heat uh the other day on Twitter. I was like, everyone's like, we need to put Trey Murphy in the starting line for Jackson Hayes. And I was like, No, you're looking at the wrong thing here. You know, people are pointing to space and all these different I was like, Jackson Hayes isn't the problem. What the problem was is that B. I. J. V. and C J went twenty four of sixty two from the field. When your stars don't show up, especially against a team like the Suns, that's who you need to look at. Tonight, different story. CJ was a little I, – I thought he was forcing a lot. I know he's he's going he's going through a, you know, C sick. I don't know – we don't know the extent of what he's sick with, but clearly he's going through something because he doesn't look very energetic. Uh, but he closed the game out very well tonight. Brandon Ingram, superstar. JV, once again, a little bit off to a slow start, but he had some big, big buckets down the stretch, mm -hmm. especially in the second half. When, you get, when you're banging with Aiton – for 30 plus minutes, man, that, that that's not easy, but he was a monster again tonight. He, he when your superstars tougher. play, when, when our superstars play well, we're, I'm telling you right now, we're going to win a lot of people. Like, are you surprised? I mean, like, no, like we're a good basketball team. No, I like, mean, we are. And, cause, and if you, if you look at the, I mean, look, and now we got ourselves into a hole in game one and, and we, I think you showed a lot of grit. You showed a lot of, I think, what this team is made of and what the coach is made of by scratching out of that and making it a game in game one. Yeah. But if you go take the second half of that game, we played really well. And and the one thing we did was we scored the basketball. And so I think they figured out something at halftime of, of game one. And that has now obviously carried over. Um, I mean, what do you hung 125 on them tonight? And I mean, sort of got a lot of, a lot of what you want. I thought Jackson getting out in transition was massive there. Uh, yeah. In the third quarter, and we kind of opened it up a little bit, um, or we caught back up rather. But he, uh, I mean, all around, it was really a great game. I, I think there were a few times we, uh, you know, I mean, if you're if we're going to nitpick, I think defensively we had a couple of lapses. I mean, Booker got some real. I mean, when he when a guy's that hot and he's getting those type of looks, and then we had a little stretcher in the fourth quarter where I got nervous when we we really couldn't get a stop. But yeah, hey, we got the stops we needed offensively when you're going like that it, it just doesn't take very many stops to be honest with you right um, um they run it's called a set ross called the spain pick and roll so it's it's, it's a it's a ball screen usually it's eight and seven the ball screen then it's a back screen um sorry god dang it espn sorry anyways it's called spain pnr uh so aiden sets the back screen and then booker who sets 
he, he sets a back screen for Aiden, so it's either a lob, which you have to take away, or Booker pop, and that's what Booker exactly. kept getting open. And you hear Antonio Daniels say it uh, in the uh, broadcast that they worked on that today, but you know it's a lot harder to communicate. Mm-hmm. There's like two there's two or three screens going on in in like less than two seconds so it's hard to navigate and when you have a guy like chris paul can just pick you apart it's a lot harder to defend guy we got to talk about and we got to talk about him he's been unbelievable larry nance i ross i want you to talk to talk to me about him because i remember when we traded for him that day uh you came in on the pod and said that he was a i guess a bigger better version of josh hart and he's been nails yeah, he, 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 and like I said, that and he's been better uh, these last. I mean, the last week he's been better than I think any of us thought he could be. I mean, t- tonight the way he was shooting the basketball, confidence, mm. catching it, and releasing it. I mean, it, it, again, it's, those guys aren't. I mean, he's not going to shoot it that well every night. But golly, man, he becomes really tough. Because and what I said was, you know, he's basically the forward version of Josh Hart in the sense right. that he's going to make a lot of effort plays. He's always. You're, I mean, you're never going to go out there and be like, man, man yeah. Larry really didn't show up. I mean, he didn't really play hard tonight. He's just, you're just not going to see that. He's a guy that's going to play his ass off. He's going to make a bunch of hustle plays. He's going to get tip ins. He's going to do all that stuff. And that's what you're seeing. I mean, the fact that he's gobbling up rebounds like this in, you know, 15, 20 minutes is, is crazy. I, he was, he was huge tonight. He was huge. Yeah. Yeah. And he's effective because that's when I think the Pelicans, I think their best lineup. I mean, I know JV's done some good stuff, but I think their best lineup is when Larry Nance set the five and you have Trey, her BI and CJ. It's tough to guard. Uh, especially in cleaning up the boards, which we were getting a little uh, boxing out wasn't that great tonight. But you know, Phoenix is such a physical team, and they take a lot of threes, so you get those a lot of long rebounds. Mm-hmm. Um, let's. I, I know we got to like wrap up the next five minutes, but let's talk now. Like, dude, we got a fucking series. You know, Devin Booker hamstring injuries. We know those linger now. Like those linger. Uh, so that's going to be that team's way different without Devin Booker. One uh, one coming in New Orleans, man. You got to think. Listen. The Suns are in a fucking war right now. That's oh, yeah. that they're in a like they they're going in that locker room banged up and uh, got to travel across country down here and this place is going to be electric Friday oh, night. God, yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. a lot of people will be drunk. It's going to be said, it's, it's gonna be a fucking thing. Saints game. It's, it's going to be a Saints game. It's the game. same thing we said. It's the same thing we said against the Spurs. You, you don't want to come in you don't want to come and play a New Orleans team when they when they're the only show in town late on a Friday, Saturday, you just don't, you don't want to be doing that in general. It's going to be fucking crazy in there. It's going to be crazy. You thought it was crazy against the Spurs. It's going to be fucking nuts in there. Pardon my language. I mean, it, it is. It's going to be it's going to late start. People are going to be fucking bombed. It's going to be great. It's going to be all, <laughs> You're all time. banged up. It's going to be all time in there. It's going to be great, man. So like, you know, obviously both teams are making some adjustments. You know, I think my have to make, you know what a little scared me a little bit tonight was Shamit and how he played. Like he, you know, I was he had really a couple surprised. big threes. Yeah, you know, you know, I was surprised how long because I, I, I actually don't think that's going to be their best lineup. Um, right. I, I was really surprised how long they stayed with Shamit. I was surprised for a while there, whenever we really wanted to run, how long they left Chris Paul out. I, I thought Monty made a couple. Yeah, you know, I thought he stayed with his second unit too long. But I think, I mean, not I think. You can damn well bet that you're going to see a shitload of Chris Ball, Michael Bridges, Crowder, um, uh, Cameron Johnson, and, and DeAndre Ayton. I mean, those five guys are going to play a ton. I, I was really surprised how much time Shamit got. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more of that other five. And, and look, that's still a tough five. It, it's, it's four guys that can really do a lot of stuff. Um, but, hey, they're coming to our house. If Booker can't go – I mean, look, this series is why. I mean, I, we got a puncher's chance at this thing, even if Booker plays. But if Booker can't go, the, Spur- the Suns are in trouble. I'm telling you right now, they they really are. Like I, I, I'm like, I'll tell you what, man. Hampshire, I, I, I'm telling you, just, Devin Booker's a compete. He he competes his ass off, man. I can't. Could you looked, imagine the looked, zone the defeat, zone he, he was looked, in? Go yeah, he ahead. Looked real defeat. He looked real defeated. He looked defeated. Like, you know, like the zone you got to be in, you're, you're, you're 31, he's 7 of 10 from deep. You got to be hurt to not come back in that game. You got to be. You I, Listen, I that. never wish injury on a player. No. But, man. But well, shit happens. I mean, look, and I, I just want to go back and, and, and really stress this point because it, it, it can't be understated. We could have rolled. We played a, a 
mentally and emotionally taxing game against the Spurs. You fly across country, you do the same thing. You play a, a, a 48 hard minutes against the Clippers. Two days later, you go to Phoenix. We could have rolled over and died at halftime of game one. You, you really could have. You could have lost that game by 25 and said, ah, you know, team's tired, emotionally beat. You know, we'll, we'll regroup and be back for game two. But, but we did. they didn't. And, and by not doing that, by fighting back, you gained confidence. You found some things you can do offensively. And that led into this. Devin Booker went went ape shit, and you were only down a couple of points at halftime. I mean, they can't, they can't play any better than they played in the first half, and you were only down a couple of points. So it, it, just, it just speaks to the direction that things are going, the confidence that this team is playing with. Because, again, I mean, there's a lot of teams that just roll over. I mean, look at the T-Wolves tonight against Memphis. A lot of teams, you're getting blown out. They just kind of roll over. Ah, well, you know, we'll catch them on the next one. And and they didn't do that. And it, 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 it's very, very, um, you know, it's given me a lot of optimism for what can happen down the road with this team for the rest know, of the series. Dude, as you said, man, this series is wide open. And a lot, all the, you already know, Devin, Booker ain't practicing tomorrow. You got travel. Um, it's a fucking four-hour, three-and-a-half-hour flight. I listen, man. That's that's gonna be a that's gonna be a pretty big news story. And, and listen, Ross, this team Pelicans go up two one Sunday night in the blender for a chance to go up three one. Oh my goodness! Oh my seriously! Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. Closing thoughts. Last question. I know you got to run, but what do you think of Willie Green tonight? I really did a really really nice job. He, he's fucking unbelievable, man. We said it against the Clippers. He, he panicked in, in the third quarter against the Clippers, and then I thought he he, missed, he corrected the mistakes. He's learning. He's still this is his first time doing this shit. Okay, right. this is playoff basketball against the best coaches in the league, against the best teams in the league. He's learning. That's all you can ask for from not only him but the whole fucking team. Is we're learning and we're getting better, and it's not happening game by game. It's happening quarter by quarter. Right. And so, you know, right. kudos to him. I, I thought they did a great job. I thought, um, I mean, he went to Trey, came in for Jackson pretty early in that first quarter, I feel like maybe right at the six-minute mark or something. And so, you know, especially with the way Jackson played last game, how they weren't really guarding him, I thought making that move pretty quick, um, just giving them different looks offensively because that group, that Trey group was the one that got us back in the game in game yeah. one. So, you know, it's learning, finding what works, and not to mention all of these like, – these kids are all 20, 21 years old anyway. So, like, you don't – I mean, the fact that they're playing this well, I thought Jose was phenomenal tonight. Oh, um, it's it just – there's a lot of things to be – look, there's a lot of things to be excited about. Right. We're 1-1 coming back to New Orleans in a series against the number one seed, best record in the entire league. And I, a we, got a, we got a puncher's chance at winning this whole – Seriously. Winning this series. We got a puncher's I mean, chance at making this a fucking – this is going to be a long series. This thing ain't going five. No, no, I agree. And, uh, you know, before we get off, because Willie Green was incredible. I just like, it's just a testament to how he keeps everybody involved, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Jackson Hayes only got 11 minutes game one. Well, he, you know what, Willie? I'm sticking with my guy. He stick, sticks with the same lineup. Jackson produces tonight. Um, you know, we're still not understanding the Devontae Graham minutes in front of Jose, but it doesn't matter because Jose's always ready. Trey Murphy, always ready. Najee Marshall, always ready. Like, Will, what, what he's it. done, man, is, is incredible. We said it going into the Clipper game. The, go, don't – you've done so many good things the last, we'll call it, three, four weeks. Right. Like, like this shit work. It's working. You're winning basketball games. Like, right. just stay with what you have. Tinker a little bit. Stay with hot hands. But you don't need to reinvent the fucking wheel here. We, we've got – you've got a bunch of good, hungry young players. Let's keep rolling with what we got. God. Fucking, it's one one going back to the blender, man. This is all you could do. You're stealing one in Phoenix was best case scenario. We stole so, one, man. It's like mission we're, accomplished. Mission accomplished mission. in Phoenix. Let's come home. We have home court advantage now. Ross Tivin and Justin Appley. Ross, I know you got a roll. Thanks for joining. I'm gonna do this read now. It's the NBA playoffs, which means next level basketball. Get in on the first round action with DraftKings Sportsbook the official sports betting partner of the NBA. This week, new customers can bet $5 on any team to win and get $150 in free bets instantly. Mm. You win no matter what. Once again, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code BOOT. It's right there. Bet $5 on any NBA team to win their game. You win 150 instantly. That's promo code BOOT at DraftKings Sportsbook. 
Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, crisis counseling and referral services can be accessed by calling 1-800-GAMBLER, 1-800-NEXT-GAMBLER. Justin Appley, Ross Tivano, 1-1, coming to New Orleans. Let's fucking go. Talk to y'all later. (laughs) 